This is Tuna on Toast. Elaine Park, yeah. uh, many of you guys watching know, but if you don't, the summary is this. Back in 2017, her car was found on Pacific Coast Highway, but she was not found. Correct. And she has not been found since then. Nobody has been arrested. And that's where we stand today. Back in 2017, both you and Neil Strauss were on the radio with me, like shortly after that happened, discussing this case. Yep. Since then, an unbelievably successful podcast called To Live and Die in L.A. that Neil hosts, and you're on it as well, right? Yeah. Um, we were documenting um, as we were going, and, um, and a lot of that content was included in the podcast. Right. Um, so as we sit here today where like where are we with this case are there suspects are we any closer there's a huge reward for tips leading to the arrest of who is responsible yeah it, it, it's kind of a complicated question i okay. mean the 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 podcast spells it out i think really well um you know the there's a lot of information to absorb um you know um it's not a case where there is no information. That's for sure. There's, there's a lot of information, but, um, over time, uh, information gets lost. Um, you know, it's, it's taught us, uh, a lot about, uh, the importance of, there are certain things that when, when somebody goes missing, um, you know, like digital information, um, should be preserved. Um, a lot of stuff gets lost very quickly. So if somebody goes missing and no one knows what's happened for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days out, a lot of that stuff is never going to be found again. Oh, man. Um, but not all of it. That's the interesting thing. So, you know, the podcast um, or, or just in general, our um, interaction with this case, my interaction with this case, it, it was very eye opening in many different ways. Refresh our memory how and why you got involved, because again... You and I chatted about this shortly after Elaine disappeared. Yeah. So Elaine's car was found uh, very close to where I live. Okay. And I had run into Neil's wife, Ingrid. You know, we're all good friends. I've known Neil forever. He, you know, wrote an article about Incubus for Rolling Stone back in like 2003 or something like that and traveled with us for like a, a week or two. Oh, wow. So I got to know him really well at that time and we just remained friends. And so Ingrid says, oh, do you hear about this girl who went missing and her car was found, you know, right, right down there on PCH. And, uh, I was just sort of like, no, like what, what, what's happening? Like what happened, you know? And she explained to me. And then I realized also that I had seen this drone search going on right before that. And I was like, Oh, that must've been what I saw. You know, there were search and rescue people and drones and they were, you know, combing the cliff sides and p divers in the water. I mean, it was like pretty intense. And so Ingrid told me that she had been talking to somebody on Facebook who was running a Facebook page where people were talking about the case and they, and it was connected with uh, Elaine's family. And so Ingrid said, I've been talking to them. They're really nice, but they need a lot of help. Maybe we could help them. And I was like, of course, like, you know, would love to be able to be helpful. Like, you know, we know lots of people in Malibu and, you know, if there was any way we could help raise awareness or whatever. So the next thing I know, we're all sitting in my living room with, you know, Elaine's wow. mom, uh, Rosemary, who was wow. running the Facebook page, uh, Jaden, who's a private investigator, and all of us were sitting together. You know, Jaden, of course, was like, you know, what the hell do you guys want? You know, like, we're not here to, like, answer questions about this case. And we were like, no, 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 of course, like, we just want to help. Like, if there's something you guys need that we can provide, you know, access to, like, maybe we could raise money, like, whatever, like, we'll help. Right. Um, cause it was really disconcerting that somebody could just disappear a mile away from where I live. You know, it's just super weird. Malibu seemed like it should be such a safe place. It was scary that somebody could just go missing like that. And her body has never been found, correct? No, nobody's. And has anyone been arrested even for 24 hours yet? No, no one has been arrested. No. Nope. Like I said, um, over time, it's hard to recover pieces of information um, if somebody does a good enough job of covering up or or distracting or whatever it is, information gets lost. Mike, Mike, Mike. Who, whoever is responsible, one person, two people, three people, whatever, they must be having crazy anxiety that luckily Elaine Park is being talked about 
and in the podcast to live and die in LA in such a huge way. There's like 60 million downloads. Do you ever feel afraid that whoever is responsible is like F uh, Neil Strauss and Mike Einzinger? I mean, all we're doing is commenting on sort of what we experienced. And I don't think that that's reason enough not to like, we want Elaine found. Yeah. That's, that's the moral of it. And, you know, we've put in, you know, probably thousands of hours of, of time and, and work, hundreds of thousands of dollars in, in expense resources and, and a reward as well. Um, Which is up to what? 250 K. And you, yeah, it's 250 grand as a reward for any information leading to Elaine's whereabouts. You know, you mentioned, you know, whoever was responsible for it, exper- experiencing anxiety or whatever. Sociopaths don't do that. Okay. Right. They don't give a fuck, Mm -hmm. you know, they have other motivations for what they do. So maybe that's the case here. Maybe it's not. I can't tell you today. You know, the police accept any tips you guys get and you say, look, we've gotten these messages. Is it cool if we just tell you some information we have that maybe you don't? Yeah, we've given a lot of information to the police. You have. Okay. You know, they don't necessarily share information with us, but. We give them anything that we, anything that's of value to us, we will share with law enforcement, you know, or, you know, there's certain things also that we work on. We, we don't share anything that's not factual, you know, that's not um, like speculation in, in investigations is sometimes can be a useful thought experiment, but, you know, being speculative can really lead you down the wrong path a lot. So we try and just really stick with. Uh, what we know and what can be confirmed. Okay. Um, it, <laughs> it's, it's a fucking crazy story. <laughs> so after all the information that you have up here, real facts, is there a suspect in your mind who has not got brought in? Someone that you can definitively say, we think it's <laughs> he or she. Um, Him or her. In my own mind, um, I'll just say probably, um, you know, it's, it's something that is a little difficult for me to talk about, but, um, there's a lot of, there isn't no information. I'll just say that, you know, um, some of these sort of really hard to solve cases are like, no one knows anything. Um, this isn't one of them. This is a, a, a case that can be solved. Um, it's just a matter of time. I think. Okay. My fingers are crossed that somebody is arrested for the, for, for Elaine Park. I I think, I think that, you know, Elaine's brother, Dustin, um, is like just a really, really sweet human being. And, um, you know, I care about him a lot and, um, he, he's been through a lot and, um, I think he deserves to know the truth. Hope you enjoyed. Now hit that subscribe button. And for more Tuna on Toast, listen wherever you get your podcasts.